Today, I'm making a Sikia Omentata. And let me tell you, these are not your Nona's meatballs. Before we consider if these are ancient Roman meatballs or ancient Roman hamburgers, let's take a look at Roman fast food. Back in ancient Rome, much like today, people needed to grab food on the go. And this is where the thermopolium comes in. Literally meaning, a place where hot is sold. What hot? Maybe hot food, hot wine, hot women? Well, we'll get to that. These establishments were built with L-shaped counters that held many jugs, or dolia, which would contain all of the hot foods. Some even had booths if you wanted to stay for a while. Many Romans didn't have kitchens, so these thermopolia were essential for the cities. It's estimated that there were over 150 in Pompeii and Herculaneum alone. Many of these places would advertise pictures of the food that they would sell, and I wonder if, like today, there was a little bit of false advertising. So what did they sell? Well, Isikio Mentata, and snails, and cheese, and honey, and cured meats, and many other types of dishes. But many also served up prostitution, and gambling, which was an issue in Rome. Although not very well controlled, Gambling was illegal in Rome, especially gambling with dice. However, doesn't seem to be stopped as many of these frescoes actually show the act, like right here on the left. Claudius at one point wanted these places shut down, while Plautus, for example, speaks of effeminate Greeks and thieving slaves frequenting them, and Juvenal says that they were frequented by assassins, some sailors, thieves, fugitive slaves, executioners, and coffin makers. I don't know, it sounds kind of like my kind of place. So I'm going to cook a meal as if I work at one of these drunk prostitution gambling halls. The recipe comes from Apicius in De Re Coquinaria, where he says to just use meat. So I just chose to use beef because it's easily accessible. So I took a couple of steaks and I'm just slicing them up, chopping them up, and going to kind of make my own ground beef here. And halfway into chopping, I realized I should have just bought ground beef. Now I'm just going to take some of this stale bread that I have and remove the guts of the bread. I'm going to leave the crust behind, throw that into a bowl, and let it soak with white wine. I guess you could use red wine too. Uh, the recipe just calls for the wine. While the bread is soaking, I'm going to make the coroinum, where Pliny the Elder speaks of these syrups as a product of art and not of nature, being prepared from must, boiled down to one-third. When must is boiled down to one-half only, we give it the name of defrutum. All of these mixtures have been devised for the adulteration of honey. So, when the grape juice is reduced down to two-thirds, you have coroinum, one-half, defrutum, and one-third, sapa. These are all just liquid sweeteners. The more reduced down, the sweeter it's going to be. They were cheap replacements for honey. And for the recipe today, I'm going to be simmering these meatballs in the coroinum. For our spices, we're going to start off with black pepper, and we're going to replace myrtle berries with juniper berries in allspice, uh, mainly because I couldn't find myrtle berries, and in other recipes for Isikio Mentata, juniper berries and allspice have been used. So I'm just going to grind these up, turn them into a nice powder. Now is the time to start adding everything together, so I'm just going to throw this meat into a bowl, add in the spices, and I'm going to take the bread and I'm going to remove most of that liquid, just kind of squeeze it out there just so these meatballs aren't too wet and they actually hold together. And just going to mix them up. Now there's another ingredient that we have to add to these meatballs and that is the garum. Garum is just a fermented fish sauce made out of fish and salt. They were stored in these amphorae, and let me tell you, it was like ketchup to the Romans. As I add in Rome's favorite condiment here, I'm gonna get together some whole peppercorns to add in, which is a little interesting there, and a whole bunch of pine nuts, which I'm kind of excited about. It will be uh, a different texture. Now I'm forming the meatballs, and I don't want them to be too big or too small. I think I get five out of this. So now, the part that I've been looking forward to the most, playing around with the call fat. 
Now as I lay this out, well actually, before I start, what is call fat? Well, call fat, or the greater omentum, is just a fatty membrane that covers an animal's digestive organs, in this case, a pig. Call fat adds the flavor and can be used on any kind of meat, like steaks and sausages, and even turkeys. This membrane is actually really flexible, so I actually have way more than I need. I'm gonna start cutting this into sections, uh, little squares, then I'm just gonna wrap these meatballs in them. And I, this is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm trying to get an eye on how much I need. So some of these meatballs, like right here, there's just too much of that on there, and I'm gonna cut some of that off later behind the scenes. For me, this was the absolute best part of cooking this recipe, is playing with a, an ingredient that I've never used before. It's, it's really fun, especially an ingredient that looks like something out of a horror movie, something so alien. I had enough to make probably 50 meatballs, but I only made five. And, well, speaking of meatballs, where are meatballs from? After a little digging, it seems that an early version of kofta was created in the Persian Empire, and some of them today actually have pine nuts in them, which is just funny how good flavors can transcend time and distance. There's no real exact guide how to cook these, so I'm just using my gut, and I have just a thin layer of olive oil on this pan, and I'm just gonna sear them first. Uh, they are sticking a little bit. I just don't think that I let my pan get hot enough before putting them down. Now, <laughs> once I flip them, I'm going to add in that coranum and just let them simmer until cooked. Finally finished, and I'm just going to add in that reduction of that coranum that they cooked in right over top. I'm actually really surprised that they held together. I think they kind of look great. Isiki omentata. I'm saying they're meatballs. You know, I'm not really afraid to eat this, but, you know, there's always just that little fear factor part. Let's give it a go. What I don't like is the whole peppercorns. The whole peppercorns are gets you back to throw but the pine nuts <laughs> the pine nuts are actually really nice the texture is great in there it really is like the first meatball and it's really neat that the call fat kind of acts like a sausage casing holding everything together so while it cooks it's not just falling apart which without this certainly would fall apart. I give this a 6 out of 10, making little minor adjustments, getting rid of those peppercorns. It could get up to a 6.5 out of 10. I definitely consider these meatballs, not hamburgers, but let me know what you think. <sighs> adjustments, getting rid of those peppercorns, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, I found this on the web for making some. Check it out.